Good morning. It is so good to have you with us this morning. Um, happy 4th of July weekend to everyone. I want to give you a little bit of an update on some of our ministries. Um, as we continue to try to um, meet the needs of those that are receiving items through Seven Hills, one of the requests that we have received this week is the need for tarps and blankets. They can be gently used blankets, so if you have any blankets at your home that you would like to pass on, uh, those can be given, brought to the church, and then we will make sure they get to Seven Hills. So we just encourage you to continue support of Seven Hills through our food outreach, uh, also support as CEO, and then just the mission and ministry of our congregation. All these gifts are vital, and we are so grateful for them. You can give to each of these online or also by sending a check through the mail. Um, and so I just ask as we begin the service that you join with me in a prayer for these gifts that we have received. Holy and loving God, every good gift is a gift from your hand. How grateful we are for all of these gifts that allow us to be in ministry to our community. Bless these gifts that we have received. Bless the giver. And help us to live each day with a grateful heart and a heart to do your work in the world. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. And I am here to share with you about a word you're going to hear in a minute in our scripture reading. And that word is weary. What does weary mean? Well... Weary is when you are just so very tired that you just don't think you can go on anymore. And a way to get rid of the weariness is to take a nap or get a good night's sleep. And your physically weariness, physical weariness, should be better after you've rested. But there's another kind of weary that we're going to talk about right now. And that is when you're just fed up, not physical. It's emotional or mental. You're just done. You're done with doing school online. You're done with not being able to come to church. You're done with having to social distance and not see a friend. You're done with wearing these masks. All these things are keeping us safe, but we're done with it. Maybe we're done with turning on the TV and always seeing just bad news day after day. We are weary. How do we get rid of that kind of weary? We can't take a nap and wake up and it be better. It might help, but more than likely, it's not going to change that kind of weary. How do we get rid of it? Well, Jesus says, come to me. Go to him and he will take our weariness away. Well, that sounds really easy, but how do we do that? How do we go to Jesus and take, get him to take away our weariness? Well, we can take it to the Lord in prayer. Or maybe we just need to be still. And maybe we just need to slow down and wait and look for Jesus. Wait and look for God. And this makes me think of something I like to call the yay God moments. You know, when you're feeling tired or worn out and you see a beautiful sunset, somehow that takes that weariness away a little. Or you see a sunrise that is stunning that takes that weariness away. Or maybe a friend calls and talks and helps you laugh. That takes the weariness away. Or you're sitting in your garden and you see a turtle or a hummingbird. I love hummingbirds. All of those things are yay God moments. Those kind of moments is what helps us slow down and let feel less weary. So this week, I'm going to challenge you. When you're spending your day doing whatever you're doing, and you're feeling a little weary, or you experience a yay God moment out of the blue, Share that. Come back and make a comment in this video feed about your yay God moment. 
whether it is you just woke up and you had a yay God moment because you don't feel weary today, or you're sitting outside and a beautiful cardinal flies across and you see it. Those are yay God moments. Share those with us because someone might read your yay God moment and it might help their weariness a little bit too. But always look for God when we're feeling this weary. Friends, as we come to this time of affirming our faith, we offer with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we come now to a time of sharing our joys and our concerns. I do want to begin with a joy that is not on the slides, but we want to celebrate with Jonathan Putnam, who's our worship leader, and Taylor Gwynn, who were married last Saturday in Colorado. And so we just want to to share in the the joy of of their marriage and so and, and pray God's blessing upon them. Be, as we continue to go through these uh, joys concerns. Would you lift up these persons for healing? Dorman and Phyllis Delp, Chris Swenson, Gina Hammaker, Bethany and Grace Paul, Jack Meadows, Roxy Olson, Joanna Smith, Cynthia Galloway, Jim Carter, Pat Askew, Darla Hill, Justin O'Dell, Douglas Lund, Janine Dimitru, Mary Coutinello, Leonard McCandless, Rick Coleman, Todd Bartholomew, Craig Hull, Susie Brazil, Jean Sayers, Levin Hardy, Phyllis Titus, Fern Kelsey, whose son continues to be missing, also for healing, Lillian Edens, Lynn Snodgrass, Michael Bowers, Phil Swinson, Patrick Williams, Medora Monagold, the family of Kathy Coates, Beverly, Litz, Beverly and W.C. Litzinger. Uh, Beverly is improving and W.C. Um, is as well. He's on oxygen 24 hours a day, but they continue to recover at Arkenshire. So if you would continue to keep Ed Campbell Mark Campbell's father in your prayer for healing. Also, as please keep the family of Rich Homer in your prayers as they grieve his loss. And also the family of David Reeves and the family of Susan Leslie. Susan passed away this week, so we ask that you hold Jim and um, all of the Leslie family in your prayers. Friends, would you go to God in prayer with me together? Holy and loving God, at this time when we give thanks and when we celebrate and we remember the independence and freedom of our nation, we give thanks for all of the men and women who have valiantly served and fought for the freedoms that we enjoy every day. Help us, O God, in your wisdom and in your strength, never to take these freedoms for granted. To know how blessed we are to live each day free as a part of this great country. But we know, O God, that everyone does not experience freedom in the same way. So help us 
as your people to fight for freedom here in our country but around the world, to be on the side of freedom for all people. We also lift up this day all that we have named before you and the many more that we have named silently in our hearts. For all of those, oh God, that are ill, that are in a time of recovering, we pray for your healing power to be upon them. For all of our healthcare workers, all of our first responders who go out to take care of those in need, we pray for their protection, for their strength. We give you thanks for their service. For all of those, O oh God, that are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that your comfort and strength be with them, that you grant them your peace. And for all of us as your church, we are weary, O oh God, weary that we still cannot yet worship together. But we are grateful that we can worship in this way. And we know that the call upon our lives as your church remains the same. That you call us each and every day to reach out to our neighbors in love. To find ways to be your ambassadors of grace. To offer kindness. To offer, to offer a helping hand. So never let our limitations, O oh God, stop us from doing your work the work that you call us to every day, but bind our hearts together as one and help us to, to still experience and know the, the community that this church family always offers us and to still feel a part of your great work in this world. We offer this prayer in the name of your son who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, our scripture this morning comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God add his blessing to the reading, hearing, and the understanding of this, his holy word for us this day. Would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts this day, may they be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We hear these words that we receive today from Jesus and we welcome them into our weary lives and into our weary land. It is the 4th of July weekend. Our family is usually on vacation during this time, but not this year. In past years, the most challenging decision we would have made were how many fireworks we were going to buy. Not this year. This year, everyone's plans look different as the COVID-19 virus has been moving like wildfire throughout the South and the West, including right here in Washington County. As we see a, a rising as into the highest numbers nationally of cases, many of us thought we would have a break from the virus in July because we would be outside and the weather would be warmer. These summer strategies have not been as effective as we had hoped. So we are left with the only two behaviors that seem to slow the spread in public, wearing a mask and social distancing. And we are discovering people are weary of both of these. We want to be free of this virus's hold on our lives, but the virus doesn't seem to be loosing its grip, not yet. Our hearts have also been turned to the desire of freedom for all of those in the grip of racism or discrimination of any kind. So even though the celebration of freedom in our nation looks different this year, we have freedom on our minds perhaps more than in other summers. In our Thursday Bible study, Chauncey Brummer recited two poems about freedom, and I asked him, and he graciously agreed to record them so that you could hear them today. The first was written by James Russell Lowell in 1876 as an ode to the 4th of July. Our Fathers Fought for Liberty by James Russell Lowell. Our fathers fought for liberty. They struggled long and well. History of their deeds can tell. But did they leave us free? Are we free to speak our thoughts, to be happy, to be poor, free to enter heaven's door, to live and labor as we ought? Are we then made free at last? from the fear of what men say, free to reverence today, free from the slaveries of the past. Our fathers fought for liberty. They struggled long and well. History of their deeds can tell, but ourselves must set us free. Lowell realized Our fathers fought for after liberty. the American Revolution, after the Civil War, freedom was every generation's work, every person's calling, in every place and time. We never come to a moment when freedom's work is complete. There will always be those who seek to minimize and contain and limit others to increase and highlight and expand their own. For some people, they do not feel free unless others are bound. In other words, their gain of freedom must result in others' loss of freedom. Thus, 
The work of freedom for all is never done. It never rests. There is a weariness in this truth. And Jesus knows this. He does not release us from this critical work, but he does share in the burden. Jesus' invitation to his disciples when they were tired of convincing people who Jesus is and what their work was all about when they were tired of being challenged and confronted at every turn by those in power, Jesus says to them, here, take my yoke and I will give you rest. A yoke would have been placed on two animals, such as oxen in the field, to lighten the, wor the work of both. Jesus is saying, I can't take this work away from you because it is necessary for every person to experience love and goodness in their life. But I'll carry this work with you so that even on the hardest days, you will have strength to endure and rest for your souls. I want you to think right now of the work, the burden you are carrying, the work that feels so heavy that you might collapse under its weight and power. And then imagine Jesus coming alongside of you and placing that yoke on his shoulders. So now, so now the weight that was crushing you feels light, easy to carry. The work hasn't changed, but now we know deep in our soul we are not alone. As we remember those this weekend who have fought for our freedom and independence as a nation, the greatest way that you and I can honor their sacrifice is to continue the fight for freedom for all people. Freedom for life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Freedom to work, to love, to create, to contribute, to live in equality and goodness. This second poem, Chauncey wrote in high school in an oratorical competition winning first place as he answered the question, what does democracy mean to me? What does democracy mean to me? As an American, supposedly free, what does democracy mean to me? I ask myself why brave men fought, why men have suffered for the cause they sought, why with their honor they did give a struggling nation the chance to live. What dreams possess them to fight and die, to give up their lives without asking why? Yes, black men crossed the seven seas in quest of making others free. But the day has come when the debt is due. For now we want our freedom too. We're through with crying for crying's sake. We paid the price and it's ours to take. So move aside and let us through. We're here to stay in spite of you. We won't refuse a friendly hand, but it's up to you to understand that when we speak of democracy, we speak of pride and dignity. Chauncey's poem speaks to every person, every group of people who has been counted out because of the color of their skin, who they love, the nation or station of their birth, or the amount of money in their bank account. Often those who feel the most invisible are those who are fighting to rise above more than one barrier, holding them down. When any person is seen as less than equal and worthy, when they do not live in pride and indignity, the work of freedom is not finished. 
to honor and celebrate the goodness in each person is the work of freedom Christ is calling us to take up. As we work for the freedom and worth of every person, then our nation will be free to reach its greatest potential. If we want to experience progress in our fight for freedom against all that holds us back and freedom against the tyranny of this COVID-19 virus, it will require all of us to sacrifice and to commit to the greater good. It will require all of us to do our part. None of us will be left on the bench. We are all called to take the field and to give it all that we've got striving every moment to love all of our neighbors as ourselves. When we do that, Jesus promises. He promises that he will be with us to help us to carry the weight of that load, to ease our burden, to stay by our side until the work is done. Sometimes the answer to our prayer of take this away from me is I'll help you carry it until you can lay it down. So many things that are threatening us and our fellow Americans will only be defeated when we all work together, when we join the fight. The COVID-19 virus will not be eliminated only in hospitals. It will take all of us doing our part of slowing and containing the spread. Racism in all its forms will not be defeated alone in our justice system. It will take the changing of hearts and minds of all who judge and act against another because of the color of their skin. Jesus can't take this work away from us, but he will help us carry these and all the other burdens until we can lay them down. It is in the work of freedom with Christ by our side that our weary souls will find the rest and the peace that they seek. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, help us to experience your presence near us, to know that your yoke is light and your yoke is easy and that you help us to bear the weight of the burden that we are carrying, that you are always with us and that we are never alone in your love. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. My friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.